Sean Mize here, and now I'm going to begin teaching on the concept of positioning yourself as the number one expert in your niche online uh, within a short period of time. This can be done initially in 30 days, and then obviously over the next 60 to 90 days, you can begin to, to add to this process. And so I want to make this material uh, concise. I want it to be very direct. I want it to be step-by-step step exactly what to do. And so just to give you an outline of what I'm going to do today, the first thing I'm going to do is give you some background on positioning yourself as an expert. I'm going to spend a few minutes on the idea of becoming an expert because obviously we don't want you don't want to be in a position where you're just simply pretending to be an expert. And I really believe, and I'll show you, I would give you the proof today, I really believe that you can be an expert within the next 30 days. I believe that you can become an expert in your niche if you're not already one. Already one. And obviously this material is very useful for those of you who are experts. However, you're not perceived as an expert online. I'm going to teach you how to be, per, become perceived as an expert online. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step directions for exactly what to do and how to do it to be able to position yourself as an expert online. I'm also going to show you how to position yourself as an expert to your list, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain to you why that is so critically important. So the first thing that I want to do is is, is really give some background on the whole concept of becoming an expert and not just the concept of becoming an expert, but why it's important. And so the, the first thought here, the first concept is, and, and this may be better perceived or you know, better internalized by you if you ask yourself the question about yourself. If you are looking for information online, about whatever it is, something that you need to grow, whether it's personally or it's in your business, do you go out, I'm going to give you an extreme example here first, and then we'll go to more normal. But the extreme example would be, do you go out hunting for the, the person who knows the least about the information that you need or the most? Do you go out looking for an expert, or do you go looking for somebody who pretends to be an expert? Do you go looking for the best person you can afford, or do you go looking for the absolute cheapest person that you can possibly find that might barely be able to give you a glimmer of hope? Now, my guess is that if you're honest with yourself and you're serious about what you're looking for, you know, you're probably looking for the person that can give you the most amount of information, okay, that probably is an expert or real close, certainly somebody who's perceived an expert, and you're probably going to look for the best help you can get for your budget. Okay, and, and I specify this best help you can get for your budget because sometimes the absolute top person in your niche is priced out of your budget. They're, they're priced out of your budget. Now, the great thing about that is think about your clients, your prospective clients. The absolute expert in your niche is probably priced out of their budget as well. And so what that means is that if there's somebody in your niche that's the absolute expert in your niche, if that's the case, you aren't really competing against that individual because they are priced out of the market for almost everybody in your niche that's looking for information. You are competing with everybody else that's not quite as much of an expert as that person. That's who you're competing with. And the person that you need to be is the top expert, the absolute top expert that is priced where those people can afford. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on money because I believe that as you become a stronger and stronger expert, you can continue to raise your prices whether you ever approach where the person is who's the absolute expert in your niche. Okay. The reason that I stress on this as an idea is because so many people believe that there's already an expert in their niche, therefore I don't have to become an expert. Or I cannot become the expert in my niche. Okay, now, having said these ideas, the next place that we need to go, because we can, we can legitimately rule out 
the number one expert in your niche. If you cannot rule them out, then you can probably displace them as the expert in your niche. Probably not in 30 days, but you can displace that individual if they are not such a, let's use the word, revered expert that they have priced themselves out of the normal population of buyers, so 99% of the buyers. Okay, so now that we've taken that particular expert individual out of the picture, okay, the people who are in your niche that are deciding to get expert information, they are looking for ex as much expert information as they can for their budget. They are not looking for the least expert person around. So, if you are positioned online as not being an expert, the business is always going to go to the person who is positioned as the expert. By default, when someone goes online looking for information, they are looking for the best information they can afford. And so if you go out there with the lowest price, if you go out there looking like you are just a copycat of everybody else out there, if you position yourself as having the same information as everybody else, you will not do very much business. Why? Because most people that are serious about your niche are looking for the best information they can get. And, you know, you still might be thinking, well, I don't believe that to be true. Ask yourself again, when you go looking for information, are you looking for the best or the worst? Why are you learning from me? Is it because you're looking for the best or the worst? Why everybody else that you spend money with, do you buy from them, okay, because they can give you the best information or because you went out and hunted the person who does the best job of regurgitating someone else's information. And I believe if you're honest with yourself, in most cases, you are looking for the best and the most expert information. Now, please don't get me wrong. There's commodity information out there. And some portion of what you get is commoditized information. You may be able to get it anywhere. Okay, But in your niche, you should be above the level of commoditized information. You should be offering unique information. And I believe that I've explained to you why that needs to happen. And why don't I do this? Why don't I open this recording up and ask any questions on this concept of position, why you need to position yourself as being an expert? Any questions on that concept? No, I understand that. Um, okay. Because what, once you are seen as the, the expert, people will flock to you more, more readily, won't they? Oh, absolutely. That, that's what I find. That, that's what I, I really find. And, there, you know, there's a lots of places where that happens. You're perceived as the expert. More people link to you. If more people link to you, then all other things being equal, you tend to get higher search rankings. You begin to appear online as, as the expert in addition to just positioning yourself as being the expert. By, putting, by, by being positioned as the expert, people are willing to pay a higher price for expert information. People are willing to pay a higher price for coaching. And, and it's like a snowball. The more people are willing to pay, the more expert you want to become, then people are willing to pay more. So it's like a snowball that grows and grows and grows. What, I'm, what I am picking up is that to be an expert, it, would, it, it is more advantageous if you have been through the process yourself so that you can um, put out there your own personal experiences. And that is someone who's, who, who's seen as an expert. Yes, personal experiences play well into being able to position yourself as an expert. It, they, they really do. However, I believe that you can develop those experiences very, very, very quickly. Now, why don't I go into that now? This, this idea that obviously if you're not an expert, we, we don't want to be deceptive and position you as an expert, but if you're not an expert, what does it take to become an expert? There's a few different ways that one could become an expert. Okay, And part of this is going to be an expert to your population of possible buyers. Okay. And so the question would be, how do we define an expert? I mean, we could define an expert as being someone who is the world guru 
of all kind of, of 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 all levels, the most revered person, we could say, well, the only person that can possibly be an expert is the only number one in the world on this topic. Now, my belief is that someone as an expert, when they they have an incredible control of the material, an incredible understanding of the material, and are able to pass on that information to other people in a way that other people can grow. Some might say that's a bit of a weak explanation that we may need to throw another piece of definition in. And I challenge you, go ahead and throw that in and simply attain to that level. However, let's ask ourselves this. If we are in a position where we know more than 99% of everyone else in our niche, would most people probably perceive us as an expert? Yeah, for cool. Okay. So now the question becomes, if most people will perceive us as an expert, if we know more than 99% of everybody else, what does it take to know more than 99% of everybody else? So let me offer some ideas. If you were to go to the local library and borrow 30 books on the topic and read all 30 books, what are the odds that you would know more than 99% of everybody else that knows anything about your niche? Very high, extremely high. Extremely high. Okay, now, if your goal were to simply become an expert in the topic, would it be unreasonable to assume that you could read 30 books in 30 days if instead of doing anything else related towards selling, because, because you're not an expert and you don't have anything to sell, nobody's buying anyway, so what do you lose by taking 30 days off from trying to do something that's not producing anyway? What if you were to just take your daily work time, four to eight hours, and just read one book a day? Would it be possible to consume 30 books worth in a month or maybe 45 days? Yeah, definitely. Okay, and would it detract from sales if you're already not doing any sales because nobody respects you as an expert. No. No. And so, so many people are afraid to take the time off from doing their promotion because they'll lose sales, but usually the reason that they're afraid is because they're not making sales anyway. And so, my belief is that it's far better to just take 30 days off and become a genuine expert instead of spending the next year trying to pretend you're an expert. That's my personal opinion. Okay, so maybe we don't want to go to the library and do it. Maybe we could go to an online website like Amazon.com. What if we were to buy the top 30 books in our niche, have them all delivered to our home, and read and study those books over the next 30 days? Well, would, would we probably be positioned as knowing 99% or knowing more than 99% of everybody else in our niche? Definitely. Would we, would we also know more than 99% of everybody else in our niche that's trying to sell information about our niche? Yeah. Yeah, we probably would. I would even challenge that for many niches, we would know more after reading 30 books, assuming that they weren't all just regurgitated information from each other, that we, we literally chose a nice selection of the best books in our niche. Okay? We would possibly know more than the bona fide acclaimed expert in our niche, right? Yeah. Good chance that we'd be there. If we weren't, we'd be real close. Now, the next step, and this goes out of our 30 days, and so it doesn't really apply, but I, I want to throw it in here, and that's the idea that after we read 30 books, would we also probably see that we have some holes in our learning and go back and say there's five more books that we need to get? Maybe we find them in the bibliography of some of the books we read that go into more depth on some particular subtopics. Could we expand our knowledge over the next 30 days by buying another five or ten books that would help us go deeper? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... The third way that we could do this, so the first way is the library. The second way is buying books on Amazon. I mean, obviously, we could expand this to going to our local bookstore and buying books. So that obviously, we could do that as well. Another way would be to go find the other top 30 experts online in our niche. If we were to purchase the primary core product 
of each of our 30 competitors and study all 30 products, would we probably know more after studying all 30 products than any one of those individual experts? Yeah. Can I ask you Not a question? Would, go ahead. Is, is this what you literally do? Um, I do this in lots of ways. I mean, I don't do it necessarily with 30 books, and I'm using that as an example, but many times when I'm studying a new topic, I go to the library and I'll check out 15 to 30 books on a topic. I purchase, a, a, on average, I purchase about one brand new nonfiction book per week from the local bookstore and read it. Most weeks I read between one and three nonfiction books per week on related topics to what, not just what I teach, but many topics that are related to um, deeper than what I teach. So selling, marketing, understanding people, persuasion, word, writing, words. I mean, every single week, I, in fact, last night I read a book uh, before, I, before I went to bed. Um, my wife went to bed, and over the next two and a half hours, I read a, a book. I wasn't planning. I was going to read like a chapter. I got engaged in it. I read the entire book before going to bed. That's a common experience for me is, is reading for the purpose of gaining more information. And obviously, that allows me, when somebody comes to me with a question about a particular topic, I'm able to draw from a large bank of information because of the study that I do. So, yes, to answer that, Elaine, it's not always 30 books at, you know, in one sitting, like I'm proposing here for somebody that's starting out brand new, I've already got a nice, nice foundation, but uh, I, I'm an avid reader, I'm an avid studier, and if I have questions about a topic, I will go to the library, I will go to the bookstore, or I will go online and I will purchase the information I need to learn about that particular topic, yes. Okay, excellent, very good. So, um, so now that we've got this idea, and again, this may not apply to everybody. This applies to, I just gave, could apply to everybody. I mean, even an expert, if somebody's an expert in their niche and they were to go out and buy all of the products from all of their competitors, they would become like an Uber expert in the course of the next month or two or three. And this, this really is core applies to the person who is coming into their niche and they don't know very much and they're trying to pretend that they know by going and doing some research to write an article and then do more research to write an article and then do more research to write an article. Then when they go to write an ebook, they go, well, I got to do some research for this page and research for this page and wow, that's a lot of work. You know, my, my thesis here is, look, why not just become an expert instead of trying to pretend to be an expert and having to go research every page that you write? Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. You know, and I think that some people shy away from becoming an expert because they think it might take years. And my, my theory is, look, it shouldn't take years. I mean, even if we were to take this down to a core level, if you were to go to the bookstore, tonight, your local bookstore, and find the top five best-selling books in your niche and read those five books in the next week, you probably would still know more than 97% than of everybody online about your niche. That would be my guess. I mean, obviously, some niches you know, I, I, with just five books to choose from, I, I want to be real careful how definitive I am here. But my guess is you'd be 97%, you'd have more 97% more information than most other people online. Okay, and it's not as definitive as 99%, et cetera, et cetera, that you would get with like 30. Okay, and, and so I believe that people can become more experienced on in a particular area in a shorter period of time than they think. And, you know, I think that some people go out there and they say, well, I want to learn everything I can about my niche. I'm going to go read articles online for five hours. Well, my question would be, are you going to learn more by reading articles online for five hours or just by going to the bookstore and buying a brand new book and reading the thing in five hours? Which one would you get more bona fide expert information from? For, for me, reading the book, you get you're going deeper and wider. Whereas with articles, you, you can only get so much. Mm -hmm. You know, you only only get so much. 
And so this idea, so this, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because I promised at the very beginning we'd be very concise here. But all of this to say, I believe people can become an expert faster than they think that they can. So let's move on then to now I've obviously gone through the idea that we need to position ourselves, why we need to position ourselves as an expert. Hey, because people want to buy from experts. The, the second thing is, how can you become an expert quickly? I believe I've just given something that 99% of all people can do to do it very, very quickly and become an expert very, very quickly. I, I believe that. And sure, for some people, it may take more than 30 days if they're only putting an hour into their business every day and they can only shift an hour over. Well, sure, for that person, it's going to take longer. Um, but for people who are not generating very much money anyway, what, what's the risk in just saying, I'm not going to do any business for a month. I'm just going to become a real expert. And then instead of me having to beg people to buy from me, they'll buy from me because they can see I'm an expert. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the next idea is, and I purposely save this for third, because I wanted to so totally um, drill in this concept that you really can become an expert to the world in 30 days. I really believe that. I believe that. In fact, sometimes when I'm studying a brand new topic and I go to the bookstore and I buy a few books on a topic and I read and study those books, and I, I study them, I read them, I study them. Sometimes I look in the bibliography and I say, ah, that would be a good book. And then maybe I go to Amazon or I go back to the bookstore and I, I go buy that book. And now I've got deeper information. When people come to me, they, they might think I've... I know this material intimately for years, and yet I've gained it by studying it intensely for a very short period of time. And I believe that anybody listening to this material can do it. So this third idea is that now that we've established the idea that in 30 days you really can become an expert to the world, you may not become the number one expert, but if you're the number two expert and you're the, the number one expert that's affordable, well, that's almost like being the number one expert, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because you've out you, you, you put the number one expert out of the picture. Okay? Because they don't have time. We all have forty hours. Some of us might have a few more, some of us might have a few less, but you know, I mean really in the end of the, the end of the day we have forty, forty five hours. And if somebody is an Uber expert and they have a thousand people that want an hour a piece of their time each week, guess what? Nobody's getting very much of it. And but you are if, if somebody comes into a brand new niche, they become the expert they could offer 40 hours of one-on-one -on -one consulting over the course of the week and probably charge almost whatever they wanted for that and create a nice income very, very quickly, record those sessions, create products out of them, and wham, a year from now, you've got 12 products, 15 products. And not only are you, you positioned as an expert, but if you were to look at two experts and one person had 12 products and one person had one, assuming they were equally as an expert, who would you probably think in mind is the better expert? The one with the mo most, most, oh, just bit my tongue, most products. Yeah, the one with the most products, the one with the most articles, the one with the most products, the one with the most emails. They don't even have to be better. But assuming that they are exactly as equal as all the other experts, if one person has 12 and one person has one, probably the person with 12 products is going to sell more for a number of different reasons. Okay, so let's move on. The next concept that I want to share here is the idea that you don't even have to be an expert to the world. You only have to be an expert to the people who know you. Now, I know that sounds crazy, okay, but people who don't know you are never going to buy from you anyway, right? Hmm. And if that's the case, the only people that have to be convinced of your expertness is the people who know you. Okay, so let's say that somebody becomes to know you through an article. Or maybe they click a pay-per-click ad because you're advertising, or maybe you're advertising in someone's email, and they find that your name and they find that you're in this niche. And they, they don't know anything about your blank slate. You could be an, a zero. You could be basically a nobody. Or you could be the Uber niche. You could be the Uber expert in your niche. You're anywhere in between. They don't know. Okay. Now, in the next few minutes, they're going to find out. They're going to say, who is this person? Is this person an expert? If they were able to prove to themselves in the next few minutes that they believed you were an expert because you have 12 products, because 
you are more prolific than anybody else in the area because you have testimonials, because you have all the other things I'm going to teach about today, would that person who knows you then begin to believe that you are an expert? Yeah. And if that person believes you're an expert, and someone who doesn't know you at all does not believe you're an expert, does it really matter if the other person doesn't know you're an expert? No, not at all. No, not at all. Now, obviously, over time, as you become positioned as an expert, then more and more of the world is going to be attracted to you simply because you are the expert. But when you're first getting started, the only people who need to believe that you're an expert are the people who know you. Now, there's two groups of people who know you. One is the person that finds you with an article, a blog post, a, an ad, whatever, a search engine, whatever. They come to you and they see you. Those are people that know you. And then the deeper level of people that know you are the people that opt into your list, give you the name and email address and opt onto your list. Now, let me ask you this. What would happen if all that you did, if all that you did was position yourself only to those people who gave you their name and email address as an expert, and you did nothing else to position yourself as an expert? And all the people that were on your list believed that you were an expert, even if the rest of the world didn't. Would you be an expert to those people? Yeah. You would. And so having said that, now, please keep in mind, I've already propo proposed that you should become an expert. I've already proposed that you should go out and learn more than 99% of everybody else. I've already proposed that you should buy all your competitors' products. Uh, I've suggested it as a possibility to, to, so that you can not only learn everything one person knows or everything that they teach, but learn what 30 people know. And, and, and my feeling is you'll know more than 99% of all of those people you know, or 90% at least of all the experts out there if you'd go buy all their products, okay? So I'm, I'm not in any way suggesting that someone not become an expert in, in genuinely become an expert. I'm only suggesting that in addition to becoming an expert, does it really matter outside of the people who know you, does it really matter if you're perceived as an expert? No. 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 Only the people that you, you, you build a relationship with. Huh? That's right. Only the people who know you. Okay, so I've already given the prescription to actually becoming an expert. Now what I'm going to do as I continue through this teaching is I'm going to give you the prescription for not just becoming an expert, I'm going to give you the prescription for, number one, being seen as an expert to someone who finds you online and has the question, I wonder if they are an expert. And then I'm also going to next give you exactly what to do. Actually, I'm going to do that first. I'm going to do this next thing first. I'm going to show you. I take that back. I'm going to. I, I, I've got points number two and three mixed up here. Live recording, that's what happens. So then I'm going to give you how to present that information to the people that do know you intimately on your list so that you are shown as the expert. How does that sound? Yeah, that's fine. Any questions on the thing I've covered before I get into that material? No, but what you've covered so far, Sean, is, is, is brilliant. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. 